What up and welcome to Esports in 30 where today it's all about Rocket League. I'm Brody Leaf X Moore and this man's beautiful man sitting on the couch next to me. It's pro player for Ghost Gaming, Lathamere. How you doing, buddy? Not too bad. How about you? I'm good all right. To ready to talk some Rocket League? Oh, of course. Always. We got uh, the map making scrims. It's all been good for you in the scene? All, all, everything's great. Yeah, it's just keeping the grind going. Perfect. All right. Now we got to move. We have a lot been going on in the off season, off season because it's been the off season for a while, but that doesn't mean there isn't stuff to talk about. There was DreamHack, there was Renegade Cup, and of course, there were roster changes. We're going to start off the show talking about DreamHack Leipzig, the first DreamHack circuit event of the year. But before that, Leth and I are going to make like that millionaire show and phone a friend. While we do that, check out these highlights. Devo just gets some slight contact, and now we go to the other side. Bluey, Please he can double tap! Go for Bluey! 1-0, Savage! Yukio off the wall, he sees his go. chance! Oh, oh the post! Yes, 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 the save! Vera! Looks like the mice, last chance might go to complexity, though. They've got a chance to boom this into the crossbar. And there it is, it is going to fall to Magnus! Going to go long. Squishy can't ever get to that one. Devo. Double on a tap, that's going to be dropped back down! Devo! Save for NRG, but how long can they hold on? Justin with an air release. Score release oh, in the last game, and he gets one in game five. Resembling the team they beat earlier on today, Savage, with how far they are pressed forward. Here's Scrub Killer. 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 Huge opportunity. Goes for the top corner. Oh, nailed it. He just had nothing, so he couldn't do anything. And AJ getting under this ball. Gets oh. another shot. And AJ scores a second goal for Rogue. Savage's opportunity. They've got less than two minutes remaining. There's going to be Blue. He's not Pre jumped. jumped. Oh. Justin against Scrubs there. Follow up on the rebound and now flipping it towards Crump Killer. Triple tap. Vitality 1 0. Echo Zulu have had a couple of solid chances. Vitality had chances at the beginning. Demo maybe opens things up here. Here, Scrub the shot. Oh, what a save by Taz. Echo Zulu. Bumps the at the bay. That's on target for Logan. Try and break. Yukio tries to find Panda in the middle. It's back to Yukio for the win! Game six, skate up. Over the top of Panda for 1 0. And he's going to play a safe, fishing the ball in front of him. But it's another chance for Turbo! A second test to respond. This has been one of the craziest games ever in Rocket League. And now we still await a winner. Turbo shoots. It's gone in! Dignitas are your Leipzig 2019 champions! And with DreamHack being one of the most stacked tournaments we've ever seen, of course we saw a lot of action. So, who else to break it down than Lawler himself? Let's bring him in. What's that, dude? Hey, how's it going, boys? Doing great. Bad, uh, let's talk on the winners first. Um, this has been uh, a bit of uh, debate um, just with that roster. Of course, you know, uh, Dignitas ended up dropping uh, down uh, KDOP and bringing Yukio instead. I wouldn't say dropping, but you know. There okay, was, okay. There were some swaps. There were some swaps. All right. What, what are your initial he thoughts? He chose on to leave, man. Yeah, like, he, he chose to head over there. So That's, that's true. So, what, what are your thoughts, though, with Yukio filling in the shoes of KDOP? Because KDOP's an incredible player. Yeah, we saw them first at WSOE literally weeks prior, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of questions that started to get answered, but it wasn't completely there. Um, pretty much their game plan was Violent Panda passes it up to Yukio and he scores. And they realized that it's not enough, and obviously it can't be enough against the other top-level teams. So they really mixed it up, and I think... That's the beauty of these big tournaments like DreamHack is when you have all this really high level competition, it allows you to kind of see the flaws in your gameplay and test it against the best of the best. I mean, mm -hmm. Lethmere, obviously you were there, so you know all about that, testing a new player with a new roster and, yeah. and seeing how things go. Because you guys qualified through qualifiers, didn't you? Like, you yeah, guys actually we went got through the fight. closed qualifiers and we ended up uh, taking in the lower bracket. I think Brad made it all the way through without losing any games. Um, but. As far as like Yukio goes on that team, I feel like he, like he might not be as polished of a player yet as Kadop is, but I feel like the playstyles actually match better for Dignitas now than it did with Kadop. Oh really? Well, because Kadop's more of a methodical player. I think Violet Panda and Turbo are both very reactionary players and very like improvisational. Well, you kind of have to be right when you play with Kadop, like. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, a, he's he, a loose cannon up. He's a loose cannon. He has been lately, but I still think he's 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 a little bit uh, more reserved as far as like his game like his game approach is mm -hmm. like because of that one's experience that he has in the past. Like I feel like he 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 takes it a little more methodically than than his other teammates did. So that's why now he's on a team with all one v one players. I think that that'll end up working pretty well in the future for. Uh, for Vitality, just because they all have that same sort of mindset going into it. And so now Yukio kind of matches with uh, Violent Panda and Turbo, and it seems to be working out pretty fast for them to, you know, look like a top tier team. So are we... Are we they the, won, right? Yeah. yeah. Won, so. Are we seeing, like, the, the, the Dignitas of old again then? Like, is this going to be a team that's going to start to just crush it? I mean, like, we didn't see really many people be able to um, challenge. I mean, oddly enough, it was like Triple Trouble and Savage that were the only ones that really could you know, giving them any trouble on the field. Yeah, I think that, like, um, they've got it pretty polished against the RLCS level teams. It's more the, uh, like, uh, Triple Trouble is actually an RLCS level team now, but, like, I feel like it's it's a different play style than, mm -hmm. than the established players and teams that we're, we're used to, and they're, they've are they got that play style, I think. They've, they've adapted to that perfectly. Yeah. It's it's more so the other play styles that they need mm -hmm. to work on, but... Lala, are we, yeah. are we seeing the Dignitas of old come back then? I don't know, man. You look at EU, just look at your top four, like, to be, it's stacked. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not going to be any easier. It's probably even more difficult. I think the fact that KDOP left is just spreading the top talent to more teams. True. Um, and even though Vitality has had a lot of questions around them, I think they've shown, like, on paper, we've all believed they could be one of the best in the world. Like, how do you not with that kind of level of talent? So the fact that they're finally starting to get a foothold, they understand that the things they need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. There's less double commits. Fairy Peak's starting to work into a rotation better. Like, another really solid squad with a lot of talent. So finding a way to make that work I don't think is ever going to be an issue for Dignitas. It's kind of what they do best, especially when you have, in my opinion, the best land player in the history of the eSport with Turbo Pulsa and then probably the best support player in the entire history of the eSport in Pylon Panda. It's like, yeah, they're going to make things work, and it's going to be a difficult challenge for teams to play against them, but that doesn't mean that other teams can't compete, can't take games off of them. Um, the scary thing, though, is we know what happens when Dig Toss has time to play, and the more they play, now that the RLCS season's coming in, we're getting more Dream Axe for this year and stuff, like, they're just going to be even more prepared, um, and that's intimidating. So, it's possible, but that's because the name Dig Toss carries so much weight. You like, know what's you know what's gonna carry them to victory right now? It's Snasky. What's that? Snasky. Oh, Snasky's <laughs> yeah, coach. Snasky has the coach. Yeah, he's just cool. I want to move on and talk about some other teams, but quick initial thoughts on Snasky as the coach. Good fit. I mean, Snasky's always had like a really good mindset going into the game. I'm I'm glad that he's found a coach role mm -hmm. somewhere, uh, just because of the falling out of his previous team. But um, filling in the coach role, I don't know. Uh, like, I think my see. favorite thing about him signing as a coach means that because we pretty much assumed Dignitas Toss is gonna be at every tournament. We just see Snasky more. And I'm always down for that. I'm down for that, <laughs> too. <laughs> so. I love it. Uh, also, challenging Gregan for the buffest coach in Rocket League right now. I'll give uh, it to Snasky. <laughs> and uh, speaking of, let's move on to Vitality right now. So as you mentioned before, Vitality actually had um, a, a few issues in the last season. Uh, mm -hmm. They weren't quite meshing well in the field. Uh, a lot of double commits from the team. But now that KDOP's on the team, you mentioned having that talent spread across all that European region now. Uh, are we seeing a Vitality that's going to work? Do you think the issues have been resolved? Or is Fairy Peak still going to be somewhat of a, a question mark on the field like almost like nobody like uh dis disputes the fact that like fairy peak is one of the best players in the game but it's almost to his downfall at how good he is because he he can cover everything on the field yeah yeah so much so that he double commits with his teammates but i feel like he has some maybe it's a communication issue you know he is french and uh mm -hmm. his english isn't like the best and we have kate up now that is also french and maybe they always worked well Scrum's together. Scrum's gonna have to learn some French. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, exactly. I mean, to put everything, put everything to bed. I mean, Kadop wasn't kicked from. He wanted to leave Dignitas mm -hmm. and play with Fairy Peak. That's, That's true. the real reason he he wanted to play with Fairy Peak. And I don't blame him. Like, you look at every doubles tournament that he and K he and Kadop have ever played together. They've won every single one. They've never lost a doubles tournament when those two have played mm -hmm. ever. So the fact that you're able to put that now on a freeze oriented field with Scrub Killer, one of the best of adapting mid mid gameplay. It's dangerous, and that's why we talk about how scary that team is on, on paper, right? The ability to put it actually into practice or put it into game is a totally different thing, and we've seen the issues that's great. Now, with that said, they have improved. I mean, look at DreamHack's results. Like, you can't deny that they're getting better, that they are dangerous. Like, they took second after having 
in what is honestly an abysmal season last season mm. in RLCS. So, yeah, it's great. It's just, can they continue to further that performance? Like, right. I don't want them to become stagnant. And Did that's they, kind um, of what I'm about. They didn't do so well in the qualifier for DreamHack, or was it WSOE? Right. WSOE, they had, they had a lot of troubles. Right. A lot but of double commits. You can already see within the last, like, two weeks before, like, before DreamHack, they obviously worked a lot to, like, figure out all those issues, and right. they looked really polished at um, at DreamHack. I actually found them to be the most consistent team there. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like Dignitas wasn't quite there with the, the consistency. All but, those scrims, right? Right. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Like, I really see... I stick Reagan on that good, one. <laughs> <laughs> I really see good things for Vitality in the future. I think that they now have a team that they're all on the same page. Um, right. Vitality's definitely struggled that with that in the past, so... I'm excited to see like what they can do in the next season. Now, uh, I just want to uh, talk about some North American teams real quick. Just overall, um, I mean, like North America, in all honesty, ha looks like it has an extremely strong top end, uh, whereas EU seems to be a little bit more um, just spread out in the talent. You know, even overall in the playing field. How's NA looking now compared to the rest of the world? I think. I, oh, go me, ahead. Yeah. Yeah, for me, like. EU, I think, at the top six is pretty solidified, right? Like, the bottom mm -hmm. two still have some difficulties that they're going to have to figure out with roster changes, but top six, like, good luck. Like, it's really strong teams throughout. Mm -hmm. And eight, I think we have a couple teams all splitting that, like, fourth, fifth area with the top three pretty dang solidified. Um, but that's a good thing because it hasn't closer, really happened. Though, I definitely think. Yeah, like, every mm -hmm. time, I think, Leth, you can definitely agree, is any time that North America has gone to a land, top three is like, okay, these guys can compete. Fourth is pretty much an easy win. And even though that fourth place team has definitely had upsets, per se, Evil Geniuses being the one that comes to mind the most, um, I think this season, the big reason as to why is Kenobi leaving G2. I think his efforts elsewhere is really going to help. I think, uh, I mean, you can speak to it better than I can, is I love Zane Jackie to death. Chris is my boy, but um, I think it's time, right? Like, just the one change with Can't Arsenal and then this, but at this, at this very moment. <laughs> but, but, but the, like, I love, I love Zane Jackie to death. Like, that's my guy. But mm -hmm. he's a good guy. There was change. There was changes that needed to happen, and that's unfortunate because, like, I have always fought for him. Like, I know he's a good player. I know he can pass. But when it comes to shooting and stuff like that, like when the moments that matters most, you haven't sold me on it, man. And it sucks to say, but. I mean, look at all the other players that started with the same name as them. Your Espeons, your Covenals, your, you know, even Husky, who's at my place for two weeks in one leave. Like, these guys just haven't been able to keep up. Yeah, that, that, it's understandable. Just it called out. But, you know, it's, it's the natural talents that were in the game at the beginning, and now that it, natural talent doesn't really thrive as much, you need to actually push and... Well, natural talent is all right. It, it still works. It's just without any of, like, that extra push. Oh, exactly. It, it like, everyone, ha everyone in the game the, has the natural talent. you have to give so yeah. much credit yeah. to Fireburn. You have to give people credit, like, Garrett and everything else. Guys that have been to every single land and have been there at the very beginning, like, and they're still re rewarded and regarded as some of the best in their position, like, mm -hmm. it just shows how much work and effort they put in to stay at the top. All right, I just, I wanna talk about just RLCS uh, in general in a second, but I do wanna, of course, touch on our first uh, Crossies international roster move. It was Drippe over to EG. Now this is, that's nuts. We've never seen this in Rocket League before, um, and I'm wondering if this is gonna bring more changes like that to other teams in the future. Uh, first off, good move for EG. I mean, it was a, a salvaging move for okay. EG because they did have uh, Chicago, as we know, move over to G2, but yeah. um, definitely cut their losses because picking up Drip A in place of uh, Chicago kind of leveled the playing field for EG. Mm. I'm not sure if it was quite the best move just because of, you know, they do have a lot of time to scrim because we still have a bit of time before mm. RLCS starts, but I don't know if you feel like Lawler, like they fit together well or if the play styles mesh, like don't mesh. I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question with a question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here if, it is. If they don't, if they don't pick up Drip A, who would they pick? I mean, I think it might have been Illusion or someone like that. Like, um, mm -hmm. there are, there and are a lot of... to me is a way better player than, than Illusion. No offense to Illusion, but, like, Drippe is regarded as the best player from a region. And, like, even though, <laughs> right. even though OCE is considered, like, a lesser region per se, like, there's no doubt Drippe is nuts. Poor so, Illusion, man. Poor Illusion. I, yeah, I don't think it's Illusion. <laughs> I think he's a great pick for you guys. I think he's done a lot for your guys' team. Mm -hmm. But... I honestly believe that it was the best possible scenario for them. Yeah, unless they like, unless they like pull someone from another already outstanding roster from top three, which probably isn't going to happen. Like Drip is a fantastic player. Right. It's just him having to get used to the fact that he's now in North America, he's away from family. Like there's a lot of mental stuff going on that's that's not really discussed. 
because to move your life 3,000 miles plus across the world with no family, no friends, no whatever, like Rocket League is now your life. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing else I feel going like on. it was like, mostly his life stressful. before yeah. that, too. I mean, it was mostly but his life. If you don't I understand, have, like, he had this about family and, and, like, stuff nearby. Like, it was comfortable for him. Yeah. Like, he's right. in a completely different country, having to learn different culture. Like, all that kind of stuff is tolling. And the fact that there's no real escape of it. Like, he lives at the Xfinity Training Center. Like, when he wakes up, it's Rocket League. When he goes to sleep, it's Rocket League. Like, every time. Mm -hmm. He's got to find ways, in my opinion, to separate that, which is not yeah. going to be easy. I think um, the one comment on that is he's been... He's been ready for this about a year and a half from like, now. Dude, he's, like, he can finally he's, play with a real salary. No, but he's, but he's been right? uh, like, he's been looking at this for a long time. So like I think yeah. he's already pretty settled with the idea. The mentally, of, he's, the mentally, like, he's, I'm ready. he's he's ready. He's good because like he's already had that prep. Like he said, he's fi totally fine. Like it was no problem transferring. So I think he's definitely a good pick for EG. I'm curious to see if the play styles will match because I feel like uh, OC had a lot more um, midfield presence as far as like passing. Sometimes it was for the better, sometimes it was for the worse, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know if um, Classics and Corrupted G really had that play style um, to match with him. We'll see mm -hmm. if it works out, but so far it hasn't looked too good for them. They've been definitely improving though in the last few weeks. We need, we're gonna have to find out. Uh, I do wanna move on though, because I have, of course have to touch on this. Um, we now have uh, a Sam being entered into the RLCS. This is a brand Sam. new region. Um, we saw, um, uh, of course, OCE being entered in. Took them a few seasons. They caught up. Their skill level got better. Now, with Sam, just oh, uh, right out there, what are we seeing skill-wise? Do we think they're going to match up? Are they going to have that kind of OCE run where they got to do a little bit of legwork to catch up? Right. Um, Definitely going to have to do some legwork to catch up. I think the most exciting thing, though, is that we've already seen two teams signed mm -hmm. um, by uh, South American uh, orgs without qualifiers even being played yet. So level of confidence coming from the region, which is fantastic, glad to see that. Uh, but seeing them play firsthand, there's definitely gonna be some catching up to do. Um, they've got an uphill battle, but right? it's exciting. Yeah. Well, I, keep, keep in mind, WSOE was definitely, wasn't it was not, a wasn't mishmash not a real team. Of, of players. Yeah, they yeah. just kind of got right. put together. Um, due to visa issues, but I mean like just from your as a player from your sites What have you just seen out of the region regardless of team like teams or not like at WSOE like the individual players and their decision-making just did not seem Like at the same like at par which which is yeah. fair because it's like OCE when they were first introduced into RLCS Like they mm -hmm. had some learning to do because there's just so much raw talent that They just had no exposure to until yep. they were joined into the RLCS So I'm interested That's to see the exciting if, part too though, right? Like right. we talk about how they didn't look as good because they weren't like a true dedicated team as a melting pot of, of other things. But that also means that that talent is being spread throughout all the other teams. So they get the experience from WSOE. They can now go back to their real full rosters and be like, this is the kind of stuff that they're doing in the other regions. This is why we're struggling or what we're going to be going up against. Let's take that information now before the RLC season even starts and start trying to implement it. So I think it's good for the region. Right. Um, it's just, it's going to be a lot like, Obviously, they have a bigger player base, and there's a lot of talent that they can pick from, but mm -hmm. when you're not subject to it over an extended period of time, like all these other teams have been playing against each other for, what, three years now? Um, OC obviously coming in the later half of that. Um, it's going to be a little bit, mm -hmm. right. but it's a good thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. more competition, the better. Do you, feel like, do you feel like OC uh, has less like of a variety of players than South America or vice versa? Like, I would I would ha you'd have to say yes just based upon pure numbers of population. Right. Um, and I feel like OC as a region has a very very strict play style, um, which is pretty much trying to emulate EU, um, okay. with less talent uh, mechanically and otherwise. Although you are starting to see players like Zen, you know, now taking a starting role. I mean, they just swept uh, Icon in the uh, Brawl tournament that they, or Gauntlet tournament mm -hmm. they just did. So. Um, I don't know. I think there's potential, but overall, I think South America has a little bit more to pick from and choose from. It's yeah. just a matter of I'm curious to see which teams are going to be the ones that come out of come out of it and get into the RLCS because oh. I just I don't know. We're gonna we'll find out soon because we'll it's soon. Co it's yeah. coming it's coming up soon. Um, now I got a couple uh, fan questions we got uh, online. I just want to get to Lawler before we let you go here. Um, before I do it, I do want to of course mention. Uh, can we get some F3s uh, in chat? right now for Flipside leaving the scene. Um, we do know that that team dropped. I'd love to talk about it, but we do have to get to these questions. 
Um, so hopefully you guys are giving respect to the org. Great org, been with the scene for a very long time. Uh, gone now, but questions. Um, Myth Ripper, uh, I think it was on Twitter, asks, what is your favorite event to cast since you've been branching out into other games? That's tough. That is tough. Um, Rocket League's always going to be the baby, right? Like, mm -hmm. without Rocket League, I wouldn't even be able to branch out into other stuff, so... Mm -hmm. um, casting Rocket League is definitely special in its own right. It's just... Um, I really like casting Battle Royales, man. I don't know yeah. what it is. It's just... Well, you're the and, analysis yeah. guy, dude. So, like, well, I understand it. Yeah, it makes sense. You get to sit back it's, and watch and understand what's well, going so, on. So I actually do play-by-play -play a lot in, yeah. in Battle Royale. Oh, really? Um, it's true conversational. Um, there's just so much going on that you have to pass off a lot. So you get a lot of freedom in your casting. Like, you're sitting there having a conversation with someone, and then, yes, you have your dedicated people that, you know, are the hype man or whatever, and that changes. Mm. Um, I have experienced most uh, BR casting with a StarCraft caster, actually. So he's a host, so it's weird because even though he's the one that usually directs the conversation, I'm the one that is the one that jumps in for the high-level the the high level stuff. And it mm. may be just because of the way that our voices are or the connection that he and I have. He and I are both very analytical mindset, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know, like Battle Royals just have so much different things going on that there's never a lackluster moment of things to talk about. There's always something exciting, like, always something, you can focus on. a lot of yeah. theory crafting going on. Like, focus on yeah. There's always different things that you can be like, well, what if they do this? What if they do that? And I love theory crafting in general and Battle Royales just supplement that really mm -hmm. well. So, all right, um, cool. Yeah, cool. Battle Royals are a lot of fun, man. If you've never casted one and you're looking to uh, do it, it's a good time. I love that. Apex. Possible controversial question coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, this, so this is this is a, this is a fun one. Um, this comes from Crunchy Goodness uh, on Twitter, uh, and Lawler, as a metalhead, he asks, Metallica or Megadeth? Do I have to pick one? You yes. got it's one or the other. Do I have to? Yeah, oh, so he doesn't want to pick either. <laughs> yeah. If I had to pick between the two, probably Megadeth. Okay. I don't like Metallica. <laughs> I'm throwing this to you. Too. I'm not really a metal like I'm not as much of a metalhead as Lawler is, but I would probably have to say uh, Megadeth just from like um, pure like originality and interesting content. Like their mm -hmm. their music's really so, different. So so everybody who asked me, they're like, oh, why don't you like Metallica and stuff? I'm like, because it's the same stuff that's been for however many years. Like they haven't really put out a good song since their Black album, which is Ooh. pretty bad because they've been <laughs> around for like four years. But I respect them for what they've done for the scene. Mind right? death like, magnetic. I mean, right like. Without Metallica, metal doesn't get to where it is. I just can't stand his right? voice anymore. And I, res and I respect that. <laughs> we right? know. But, all right, all right. <laughs> this is a, this is this a is metal boring. podcast, so <laughs> we do got to move on. But yeah, if you, uh, make sure you guys hit up uh, Lawler on a stream for his Metal Mondays. Those are always uh, really, really fun. Uh, but anyways, Lawler, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a blast, and hopefully we can have you back sometime. Good to see you. Always Hope you're feeling well. Oh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out, right? Awesome. And next up, we got to talk about uh, Renegade Cup. You and I were on uh, the set for that, uh, where we got to see a lot of, uh, a couple RLCS teams, yeah. uh, a lot of upsets actually, um, and a lot of bubble teams try to make a name for themselves. And we put together a little package for you to see what went down. What a bump from Bluey. That is, that is something we don't see too often on your defensive side. Oh, oh no. Fine. Alpha, the solo plays from this man. Now it's at the midfield line. Al Dente going to try and play this one in towards the box. Looking for the double tap as well. Can he find it? Yes, he can. No boost to the tank at the end. But there you go. Into the air. Cyclical. Going to beat that one over and at AXB. Great read. This is where Red are so strong about these passing plays back and forth. They are just keeping the ball out of Regalia, playing keep away. This could be really good for Savage. Could very well be, but we've seen a lot of these plays so far. Oh my goodness, no, an accidental team bump, but that one's gonna go through. Are you kidding me? I don't know, it just looks like they're all, they're on fire this weekend. They know exactly what they need to be for together, but this Wait, could Mark? be an amazing shot. My goodness, look at this. An alpha will have to follow through. A pass to the center gets past Mark. Another one past GCR, a double tap, and Devo pulls it off. Has to get this away from his end, a good demo to buy them some time, but not enough for Devo to get in position, a great yeah. double touch, and that's how you get back into it. Slushy can't get control, Gyro does instead, gets the demo, oh. and the goal, we've seen this so many times from him. Oh. Oh. That's good a huge demo. demo. And another demo on the other side of the ball. RBG <laughs> gonna respond, and there's the car for the upper line. Can't get that one away from the defenders. Pirates towards the net, off the post! Oh! It's not in! ZPS is able to keep it away, and they shut that one down. 
Ekwin, almost a connection by Noxus on the play. ZBS waiting so long in the midfield, and it paid off Alpha Cap. After the looking to clinch the win right here, ZPS downfield. Tikarol gets the touch. Oh, to oh, Alpha Cap! Yes. They manage it through! Excellent passing play. Wins out on the 50 50, looking for a bump. ZPS up high. One man dead! Alpha oh, Cap! Oh, no! No! Are you kidding me? Afterthought, are you serious? Savage just completely outclassing the rest of the competition, and they are your Renegade Cup winners for EU. We have a lot of upsets, honestly. We saw a lot of um, even RLCS teams starting to get knocked down. And um, just when we see these bubble teams, you know, compete against bubble teams, right. we don't, we're not seeing them against RLCS teams. Just curious, you know, if you've ever played against these guys, scrimmed against them. What are your thoughts on the skill depth right now, just in Rocket League in general? And, you know, is this showcasing good for teams for scouting in that? Right. Yeah, the skill gap is quite still there. I would say, like, the bubble mm -hmm. teams, like, don't have the experience quite yet to, like you said, um, it takes a lot of time. Like, these RLCS players, they, the teams, they play over and over again. They scrim constantly. And, yeah. and a lot of bubble teams, they don't have that ability yet to be able to take that much time and practice and dedicate you know, mm. their life to Rocket yeah. League. And so like Renegade Cup's a really good a way for teams to actually have a chance mm -hmm. to, to fight for some money and also put the time in and, and make, yeah. make a showcase for themselves. Or as teams like Triple Trouble on that found out, uh, a way to get your butt kicked. Yeah. <laughs> they went 0-2 in the tournament. Yeah. yeah, it's sometimes harder to play those kind of teams. So yeah, you know. it is. But it is good, again, we, we tend to see those tournaments bring out some talent again, like we've seen some of those guys, Echo Zulu was another team that yep. uh, has well, been beat us. making waves. Exactly, making waves. So uh, it is really cool to, to have those opportunities for those kind of yeah. players. But I want to talk a little bit more uh, just about you right now since we have you on the couch. Right. Um, you talked about scrims and that. I know you've been doing that. But you've been a busy man. For, uh, aside busy, from busy. casting Rocket yeah. League, being a professional Rocket League player, co-hosting on a show like Esports Show now, yeah. You've also been making maps. Make it, uh, those just, have been nuts. Just grinding, yeah. I've made, I think, 12, 13 maps so far. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, the 14th one uh, is coming. Actually, the 14th one's coming out today as, uh, well, as of yeah, recording. Right, right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the 15th one is going to be Easter. Uh, it's going to be a catwalk map where it's like opposite of underpass, where you have a bridge in the middle, and the goals are up a little bit higher. And it's okay. like full Rocket League decals and assets and stuff. It's pretty okay. crazy, yeah. This, that's not, so like, what, go, what go really goes into that, though? Like, that's got to be a lot of work. Like people keep asking me for tutorials about like how Do to make it. these masks. It's just, it's just like you, you don't want to be the source of that information, miss something, and then have these million questions about how to do it, and then I have to like respond to everybody. Like no, I want to make sure it's more YouTube content. Right, you I guess. Monetize, right? Yeah, I just want to make sure it's really polished. Like I've got a list of ideas of what I want to talk about in the tutorial, but make want to make it short and concise, make it yeah. easy to understand and stuff. But yeah, it's a lot of work. Or you don't uh, want a three-minute intro that doesn't say anything. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> like the the coding side of it's another issue too, right? Like you yeah. can do a geometrical map, but if you go into the coding side, like my my pool. Uh, uh, my pool table, or like even bowling's coming out soon. That'll be yeah. the 16th map probably after Easter and everything. Oh, um, maybe. Like just coding it to make it work in Rocket League is really difficult because the, pro like the program we have to use is like a little bit sketchy. It's yeah. a little bit old. It's Unreal Engine 3. So this is probably sick though because like you have an engineering degree. If people don't know that too, right? right. So this is kind of gives you a chance to put it to use, right? Yeah, there's a bit of the coding that I had like experience. Like I did a lot of tree stuff. Like you know, like like there's called like, these trees where it's a lot of like left right. Your gardener now? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh it's like flowcharts basically. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to use like a, like a visual representation of coding, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it's it's really rewarding to see it work finally mm -hmm. in a real game and play with friends and stuff. Um, now uh, we got a couple questions before I get to those. So I, I've, I've one thing I, wa I wanted to get a thought from you. I played with the curveball mod. Oh yeah. Do you think there's ever a chance to see that at a professional level play? Or oh is that hell no. <laughs> He's like, Hell no. No. <laughs> no. Have you seen that ball? It, like, it's on steroids. Yeah. It like spins <laughs> like, I don't even know what's going on. But yeah, the Magnus coefficient they added, uh, if, like, you can actually go in and, and affect that number. So you yeah. can change how fast it spins, okay. how much it's So maybe if it's like, kind of cranked so down If a it's bit? gradual a little bit more, yeah. Like, maybe would you want to see that? Like, is that... I don't know. Something I think that, that would throw off a lot of people, and it's just too inconsistent now. It is a physics-based game. It's really yeah. difficult to get that consistent. But if it could be polished, maybe a little bit of curve, just a little bit. Yeah. People still think it exists in the game now, but it's obviously it's all yeah, it's all visual. Yeah, malarkey. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's time to get to the questions now, because um, we're running out of time. Uh, our first question comes uh, off Reddit. Squares are two triangles. Ask this: If you were asked to make a new non-standard map that would be used in the RLCS. What would it look like? Well, it's funny you ask that because the Easter map that's coming out uh, for Easter uh, is actually a quite interesting uh, sort of shape. And I'm not going to say too much about okay. it because I've, I've shown some teasers on Twitter and yeah, yeah. whatever else. But 
I would say that's still watch the video. That's, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so I'd say that's probably a, a good shape because it's it's close enough to a normal Rocket League map where it's okay. not too because it throw people off basically. So I would say that one. It's a catwalk basically. All right, so we'll we'll see if we can push to to get in there. This is all the promo yeah. right now for that. Uh, and now a breezy a breeze co. Sorry if I say your name wrong. B R E Z co uh, says uh, when you say you would use. Uh, oh, sorry. That's can we to the next one here. There it is. Is Ghost entering the RLCS Season 7 with any kind of style in mind? High press speed, defense counterattack, high octane offense possession. Is it really seems like stylistic tendencies right now are coming out in certain teams recently? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I feel like we, we kind of fit better with um, the European style, but when we play European teams, as we saw in DreamHack, Elucian and Memory both have not really played uh, European teams mm -hmm. well, uh, before that tournament, so it was kind of a shock to them. How we how they play? We kind of play like them, but they play it a little bit faster. Like they do exactly what we do, and we were like, "What's happening? Like we're getting countered every time." And it's because we didn't adapt to what we do to other teams mm -hmm. in North America, which is why we feel like we've got a pretty good standing uh, moving into this next season. I feel like we're a little more methodical, maybe a little bit, like not slower, but just a little bit more uh, precise about what we're doing on our actions. So, if one cog falls out of place, though. That's where it all falls apart. You need to make sure, like, yeah. we have to make sure we're all on the same page, and that's where we're working on our communication uh, moving into the next season. It's all about synergy. Well, good luck going to the next season, my dude. It's been great chatting thank with you. you. Hope we'll have you back in the future. But we are out of time right now. Uh, thank you, Leth, uh, and all, of course, for joining us before. Uh, tomorrow, right here on the show, Marissa and Zurich will be chatting with Moses all about the CSGO Major, so prepare your bodies for that.